so much media, so little time. Who keeps track of it all? That would be me. This is Bob Andelman, and this is the Mr. Media Interview, broadcast and recorded live on blogtalkradio.com from the new media and baseball capital of the world, St. Petersburg, Florida. The only person who doesn't find the new CBS TV sitcom Worst Week hysterical is the person who isn't watching it. I believe that as firmly as, as I can say it. Last night, Monday night, less than 45 minutes before his marriage to Melanie, Sam managed to set his in-law's swimming pool on fire. <laughs> Don't ask me how. Just believe it was the latest fall-out-of-your-seat laughing moment on the show that thrives on calamitous humor. It's a madcap, slapstick, physical show, so an audio clip may not capture it as well as video. But let me try this, uh, this tender moment between Sam and Melanie. Oh, my God. Mm. Oh. I really shouldn't be in here. We're getting married tomorrow, honey. I don't think your dad's going to be that upset, do you? Okay, I'm going to get back to my room. You try to get some sleep. Yeah, right. Our parents are meeting today. This has huge potential for disaster. We're just going to lunch. That's more than enough time for things to go wrong. You were at a birthday party. Oh, I thought your dad's rap was funny. It was humiliating and unintentionally but inarguably racist. Mm. Okay. So they're different. They're more than different. Your mom does air kisses. My mom goes for full-on mouth. Yeah, well, it wouldn't be so bad if she didn't hold you there for a second. Look, it'll be fine. It's one meal. And we won't order appetizers. Or dessert. Oh, Mom! Wow, Melanie and Clayton. I fell asleep in there by mistake. I don't care, Silly. You're getting married tomorrow. You're getting married tomorrow. Joining me today on the show is the star of Worst Week, Kyle Bornheimer. Worst Week airs Mondays at 9.30 p.m. on CBS. If you haven't seen his show, and what are you waiting for? Kyle may still be a familiar face. He's been in training for this role as a perpetual uh, one-shot guest star in everything from episodes of Will and & Grace and Weeds to Breaking Bad and Jericho. And who could forget him in the episode of Girlfriends titled, <laughs> What's black a lacking? <laughs> Kyle, <laughs> welcome to Mr. Media. I do want to know who could forget that. I want to know the <laughs> names and numbers of the people who could forget that appearance. <laughs> I suppose you're hoping that uh, we will not repeat that again. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, 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 it was actually a very funny episode, and uh, I got to work alongside Chrisette Michelle, who's this awesome uh, R&B singer who works with Jay-Z, and uh, it was really fun. It's actually a very funny episode. <laughs> well, hey, welcome to the show. Uh, well, listen, <laughs> welcome to the show. We're, we're delighted to have you here. Um, I, I, I made it clear to everyone between me and you uh, to, to set this up that I really genuinely am a big fan of the show. My whole, oh, my whole family is. Um, I, I'm kind of wondering, um, to jump in, um, prior to, to uh, Worst Week, you were basically a serial guest star on TV shows. How did you make the leap to starring on your own show? Um, I mean, I think, you know, it's, it, it was just a slow sort of steady progress, really. I mean, the more you kind of get into rooms, the, the slightly bigger each time uh, the role is that, you know, you're reading for. And uh, that was pretty much the the journey that I took. I mean, I had um, I did a lot of commercials and little things on TV, and I would just, uh, you know, bug managers and casting directors to watch my um, – you know my DVD with all my stuff, and and they would invite me in to uh, to read for for roles, and those roles slowly got a little bit bigger and bigger until um, during the pilot season, as they call it, when when all the new shows are getting made, um, I was getting a chance to read for bigger and bigger parts, and uh, and eventually big enough, um, you know, worst week that they, they took a chance and and liked uh, enough of what I had done, um, or or had exhausted other possibilities <laughs> um, enough to, to give me a chance. Um, on worst week, so yeah, I mean, I've been at it for a while and and uh, just kind of plugging away. Have you had someone who's been uh, uh, either guiding you or uh, you know pr- uh, pushing you to uh, casting agents and that kind of person, or is it just oh been yeah, I mean, it's, 
you know, I have uh, managers and agents, and and um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's a combination of of you know marketing yourself, and then you know you you don't only market yourself to uh, to the to the casting directors. You're trying to market yourself to agents and managers, and uh, and um, you know, I mean, I, I kind of took the position when I started acting of you know you, you never say no. I didn't. I I did every student film and and short film and theater project and anything that any friend or classmate of mine uh, you know from acting class came up and asked me to do and just sort of never said no and tried to, to kind of work on the philosophy of, of volume and and uh, eventually someone would see me doing something and and offer me a job that actually had money involved and that didn't happen for a long time but when it did um you know you slowly can try to kind of build a reputation and uh yeah then you get a manager or an agent and, and everyone's kind of journey is different in that respect and then they they kind of are the middleman to to getting you into those casting jobs but i also know kind of casting directors directly and and actually the worst week casting directors are the people that directed the or that casted the pilot cast the pilot um <laughs> i don't think casted is a word um probably not were, unless you're fishing it's yeah, yeah yes um were were friends of mine as well um and had <laughs> been bringing you know gracious enough to bring me in for roles of all sizes for years and this one finally kind of um took off for all of us so was there any connection between uh the people behind the scenes on this show and any of the shows that you had guested on previously um you know that's a good question there's always some you know weird connections um hmm. i mean the casting directors had cast me in, in monk um it was actually my first thing years ago as a cop mm-hmm. um and you know, and then weirdly enough, I did a movie uh, in the spring called "She's Out of My League" for DreamWorks, in which uh, I acted with two actors that eventually became uh, guest stars on our show on Worst Week: Hayes MacArthur and Jessica St. Clair. Um, as far as crew or any of the producers or anything, I can't think right now that there was anyone that I had, I had worked with before. It, it definitely wasn't. Um, I wasn't kind of referred. Uh, you know, I wasn't. You know, it was just a straight audition. I went in and, and read for it and. And uh, eventually got it, but it was a, there was a long gap because the writer strike happened between the first time I read and the second time. So there was like I read in September of '07, and didn't read again until January or February of '08. And uh, they had I think pretty much passed on me the first time they read me, and then in the meantime they thought they would have me back to give it another chance. And, and mm. uh, yeah. Well, um, I want to uh, shout out to people listening. Uh, if you'd like to talk to Kyle Bornheimer, star of the new CBS Monday Night Sitcom, uh, the number one new sitcom in America, as CBS likes to tell us over and over again, uh, worst week, give us a call, one six four six five nine five three one three five. We've already got someone on the line. Uh, I want to give her a chance to give, uh, ask her questions. She's been waiting since we started the show. Uh, go ahead. Do you have a question for Kyle? Um, hi. Um, first, I'd just like to start out by saying I am a big fan of your character, Sam. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Um, I just wanted to know, um, do you have, like, a special way of preparing before filming a scene? Um, yeah, I mean, I I try to sort of, um, you know, I I don't have, like, a necessarily something I do every time, which is probably bad. (laughs) Um, you try to be as, as disciplined as you can and, um, prepare um in a very kind of robust way you, you're not only learning your lines but um examining the the circumstances i mean a lot of things we try to do on this show are do you know because we're asked to do a lot of comedic things that are done that have been done before and i think a lot of um of what the writers and actors try to do is do it in a really special way that no one's no one's seen it done before so if it's a double take we want it to be the best double take anyone's ever seen or the best double in time driven anyone's ever seen or the best prat fall anyone's ever seen. And from right on down from the writers, directors and the actors, you know, one thing we do in our preparation is is really looking for the, the more unique way to do it and truthful way. Um the way that I mean a lot of things I do when I prepare is, is less um is is how this would happen in life. Um before I think about how to make it funny or or how to make a joke work. It's more like if, if I was given this circumstance in life, how would I react or how would I do it? And if it's funny, it's funny. If not, it's not. Usually it ends up being funny because in life, if you kind of take a step back, we all kind of are comical in the way we deal with uh, situations. 
and because the situations are written, um, you know, to be comical, they're most likely, ideally, going to end up being funny, which is our ultimate goal, obviously. But from a preparation standpoint, I just sort of act. I just sort of ask, what would I, what, what would I do? Would I, would I hide? Would I jump up and down? Would I keep my mouth shut? Would I lie? Would I tell the truth? How would I do that? And um, and I try to work it in such a way that it ends up being funny more than kind of uh, you know reading it and saying, okay, how can I make this funny right off, right off? And then as far as preparing, preparing, it's you do everything from learning your lines to um, working out physical bits, and you know we also work on a lot of little things to the side. You know maybe it's it's written a certain way, but I see a prop or or Nancy Lenahan sees a prop, and we figure a, a way to incorporate something funny with a prop, um, you know, into the, into the scene as well. We're always kind of looking for to add stuff um, around the edges of the scene too. So it's just loving what you do, being passionate about it. And once you're passionate and really enthusiastic about a scene, the possibilities are endless. You just want to keep examining it. You want to keep asking questions. You want to keep making it better. And I think in terms of preparation, that's what I do. I just sort of keep keep running at the scene and keep trying to find more and more truthfulness and hilarity uh, in, in the moment. Kyle, have you ever gotten hurt in any of the scenes? Uh, sure. I'm thinking of, let's see, uh, tripping on the uh, the root, going after the, the birthday cake, that was great, or uh, the uh, the teacup, that's got to be a classic, where the tea, you wind <laughs> up, of course, with the broken teacup and get hot tea, which I assume was not hot, but the reaction certainly looked like it was hot. But, I mean, have you ever been hurt in any of these stunts? Oh yeah, I mean, um, there were about four or five weeks where I was injured every week, and uh, I got bit by a dog really bad. It's not really badly, but oh. like bad enough to draw blood and leave a mark that's still there uh, in the elbow. Um, a really good dog who was, you know, we were doing this take over and over again, and, and uh, I think he just got sick of um, of working, um, and uh, so I got bit by a dog. I got bit by a bird really badly. Um, <laughs> I uh, there was a scene in the episode with the with the Olympia Dukakis where I'm kind of fighting over a trash can with with a trash woman, and I uh, well you thought it was a trash man, yeah so I thought it was a trash man, and uh, I at one point we're kind of battling with the lid and the lid came down and sliced my forehead <laughs> open a little bit oh um, yeah we have like kind of a gallery of uh, of photos of all my injuries. Uh, that that are to me are kind of my badges of honor. I like uh, if I haven't been injured by Friday, I, I haven't uh, I haven't done my job. <laughs> well, I, I, I have to I have to fess up. This is actually my daughter called in. I I don't recommend okay. the show. I don't recommend the show for all twelve year olds. But uh, <laughs> she I have to I have to tell the story. She actually heard her mother and I after she was supposed to go to bed laughing at one of the early shows, and we were like, <laughs> I, I kid you not, we were laughing so hard. What are you watching? <laughs> you know? So it's been kind of hard to keep her away from it. So this is that's Rachel. A Rachel, this is than, um, you know, number one new comedy. That, I, I yeah. think that, that's what we should have on our commercials. We woke <laughs> our daughter up laughing. <laughs> Rachel, did that answer your question? Yeah. <laughs> thanks. All right. I know I can be long-winded, so thanks for hanging in there with me. <laughs> no, it's all right. Rach, thanks for calling. Thank you. And bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs> I have a comment for you. We have a live web chat that accompanies the uh, uh, the live podcast, and uh, one of the listeners who's in the web chat said, uh, fan- uh, "This is conscious choices." Says fantastic writing on the show. I mean that, and that really is. I mean that's what makes the show work. I think it, it, it's just so damn clever. I think it's one of the hardest shows to write for. I, I don't I don't do any of the writing on it, um, and um, you know Matt Tarsus who created it for the. For the, for the American audiences, it because because it could be so obvious, and because the audience could be so ahead of it, and because you're kind of wearing your concept on your sleeve, you're saying he's a guy with bad luck who messes things up. The writing has to be all that much better because we have to week in, week in, week out, kind of con the audience into thinking they, they know things are going to go wrong, and if you can still make <laughs> things surprising and clever and sweet. Um, when you when the audience kind of knows what they're getting into, then then you know you have good writing. And, and I'm always amazed that they they can turn out. And not only that, but their imagination, the way they get Sam into trouble, and the things they have him doing, <laughs> um, it's really hard to do. And um, and plus, you put it on yourself. I and mean, we set the bar really high with the first one, not only with the big gags that we did, 
but because we mm-hmm. wanted to do it in a way that wasn't, you know, too obvious and too on the nose. We wanted to kind of let people find the jokes rather than kind of tell them where to laugh. We wanted people to sort of just enjoy it and giggle whenever they wanted to, but still kind of get a kick out of this guy and all these people around him. I think the other thing the writers have done really well is they've added some great characters. They've added some real sweetness and sort of honesty to the relationships. Um, and they've had, they've kind of messed with the format a little bit in terms of, of, you know, sometimes it's not only Sam that gets in trouble. He, he ends up getting, you know, Dick Kurtwood Smith in trouble or so, yeah, it's an it's an expert room of writers in there that are that are coming up with this stuff. Well, and they've, they've created uh, the relationships on the show are real interesting because after the first week or two, you think, okay, there's no way Melanie's parents are going to let this guy marry uh, their daughter. There's just not going to happen. They must be planning to bring in another guy because <laughs> they seem to they seem to think he's such an idiot and so clumsy. And but uh, you know, clearly, um, uh, her you know the parents have come around. They, they they certainly love their what's become as of last night their new son-in-law, but there's some doubt. But the um, what I thought was going to happen was I thought that uh, Kurtwood Smith, who plays your father-in-law, and people will know him from the 70, that '70s show, I thought that he was going to be the antagonist to you ongoing. But it's actually become the uh, and I, I don't know the actor's name who plays your brother-in-law. Uh, you and he, he, yeah. The, the, sort of, um, the sort of awesome guy that never never messes up and is perfect. Uh, never cool. messes up where his in law where his in laws see it, but you see it. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, we have you know Ronrico Lee who plays the the, the sort of stepbrother in the family, mm-hmm. who works in Africa and and visits, and who in the you know episode two or three or whatever I knock out thinking that he's a burglar. Um, you know, he's like kind of a <laughs> another a classic son. moment. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, Kurt Witt's character obviously loves him. And then there's Hayes MacArthur, who plays this uh, Jessica St. Clair's husband, and who's like, uh, who's his chat, and he's perfect. He's, he's the antithesis to, to Sam. He never messes up. But at the same time, he sort of is deviant and sort of sabotages Sam. And like you said, Sam's the only one that sees this. But the more that Sam <laughs> sees it and insists that Chad is doing it on purpose or that he's, you know, the, the, the more people think that Sam is just spazzing out and being even you know, less reasonable and more of a of a spaz, which is another thing Sam does. You know, he's he, he gets himself in these situations where he just you know he has little little grace to to deal with. Tell me uh, tell me a little about some of the other cast members and, and your your relationship with them, starting with uh, Aaron Hayes, who is now as of yesterday plays your wife and no longer your pregnant fiance. Right. Well, Aaron is one of the smoothest. Actors I've ever worked with. I, I, I you know, am jealous of her, of her sometimes. The the way that she, uh, there's nothing that that they've thrown at her that she can't handle in um, in a really like you know, comedic way, in a dramatic way, whatever. I'm always kind of astounded by um, what she's able to do, and and uh, and with such confidence. And, and uh, I was talking about Grace earlier. I mean, there's an actress with, with Grace, and you know, has the same. I'm sure problems any other actor does with when they get material but boy does she she just handles it so well and you know i think we both were on the same page a little bit when we kind of got these two characters that we just wanted them to be a loving real couple and not like a tv couple we didn't want them to be bickering we didn't want them to be too lovey-dovey we wanted them to be just how sort of most late 20s early 30s modern couples are just sort of you know, hip enough, but cool, not too cool for school, you know, and kind of understanding each other, but sometimes life throws stuff at them where they, they get tense and, like, just kind of no rules except for we didn't want them to just sort of play like a normal TV couple. And though we kind of have different approaches to acting, I think that, that we've always met sort of there um, in terms of these characters, and I think that's what's been really uh, pleasant about working and then, and then seeing the results. And, I mean, our... Mm-hmm. Sort of working at personal relationship couldn't couldn't be better, and um, you know Kurtwood Smith, who plays uh, my my now my father-in-law. I mean, he's someone that I've, I've watched for years, both when I was very young and then as I was kind of coming of age. And um, uh, you know, it, seeing him play this character after doing that '70s show for years has been really interesting because I think I, I don't think he's ever been funnier personally. Maybe I'm biased because he's on our show, but I, I think. He has found so such different ways to to play the sort of stern character, and he's and he's 
so dead on and so he, he's another one that sort of I rarely see making a comedic mistake. Like he 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 just he knows how to how to make something funny and uh, and dramatic and real. Like he's he's always just right there. It makes it very easy to work with. A lot of these times with these well, actors, I don't have to do much work. I just sort of show up <laughs> and they do all the work, you know, for you. And I just sort of react to it because they're so good. I, I get caught kind of watching them. <laughs> well, on that 70s show, he was, he was playing a, a real one-note character. Here, right. in, in, in eight weeks, I, I think eight or nine weeks that the show's been on, it, it's a much more layered character. And, and it's, it's been, I was not a big that 70s show fan, but he's, he's hysterical on this. And his takes and his responses to you uh, are just, they're just priceless. I mean, well, I think, you know, the writers set up a great relationship. And like you said earlier, it's not just, he's not just the antagonist. I mean, I think one of the reasons we're having a lot of fun with this and why, as we look forward, we're like, oh, there's so many things we can do is because they're a family now and he can't just, they can't just be jerks to each other. They they have to make it work. So, uh, you know, there's a lot, you know, every, all of us are in families and all of us, you know, scratch our head that we're related to someone or try to make it work and it, you know, it goes awful or think it's not going to work and then we have like a really wonderful moment with that person or, you know, we try to get another family member to kind of be a go-between. All these little things we do because we're in families, you know, that's now what Worst Week is about and that's why it won't be just Dick and Sam kind of at each other's throats or, you know, it's it's got to go places because they're a family now, and then soon there's going to be a baby involved, and what's that going to mean? You know, is is Dick going to start giving fatherly advice, and how's Sam going to take that, and what's going to go wrong with that? And and you know, I mean, you know, my you know, I've, I've I'm 33 years old. I've been in a family for 33 years. I just started my own family, and there's right. no end to the comedy that comes in my life. There's you know, and the anxiety that comes in my life. And right now, my baby's crying right now. If you can. Look <laughs> And um, so that's what I get excited about when I look forward on it. And why I'm so good that the writers and Matt Tarsus and all the actors are on the same page. Um, because we know that we're not just limited to this concept of a guy that just has a bad week all the time. We're, you know, we're, we're, we now are in a family where all these relationships can start being comedic. And Nancy Lenahan, who plays yes. um, my now mother-in-law, is just, uh, you know, I, I find a real kinship in her um, because we have a somewhat sort of similar approach to, to the way we work, and which has been very fun. And so we, we often commiserate, and, and uh, I just love the chances that she takes. She's just a very um, kind of simultaneously risky and, and controlled performer that is, is, when you can get that combination of someone that's not afraid to take chances, but also is has tremendous discipline, that's kind of the the perfect, you know, recipe for a, a great actress and especially a great comedic actress because you never know what she's going to do and and the, the, that's that's what makes comedy is the surprises. I want to uh, ask you quickly because I know we're going to run out of time about uh, the uh, actors who've come in to play your parents, uh, Fred Willard, who is great, and I, I think the, is, is Sheila is that is it Connie Roy? Uh huh. Yeah. Connie Ray. Yeah. Anyway, um, uh, Fred Willard it goes without saying. I mean, it's just. Uh, but uh, Connie Ray, who's someone I had never seen before, she comes in and she steals the scene because every yeah. time she walks in, she kisses someone full on the mouth. <laughs> and I think, uh, I think it was uh, uh, Mel, uh, you now wife, said said to her mother, "Yeah, but her lips are so soft." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's a great thing that they keep turning around. You know, because I think the first thing she says is. Oh, you change your toothpaste, and you know, and, and everyone's kind of complaining about the long kisses, and then they, they throw this weird thing about, oh, her lips are so soft, and then there's a sort of reaction of maybe it's not so bad. Who who knows what's going on in everyone's mind? But but the writers are doing these great little kind of left turns all the time, and, and Connie, Connie, um, you know, Connie and Fred came on and 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 just sort of fit the puzzle so perfectly, and and made it made everything make sense for Sam. Like what? Why Sam is the way he is, in, in certain respect, and and the kind of family he comes from. Because we've been spending, you know, eight episodes just with the Claytons and this kind of buttoned-up East Coast family, and then, and then, um, you know, Sam's sort of, you know, 
ambrosia salad parents come and, and uh, we get a sense of, you know, a, a different flavor. And Connie and Fred mm-hmm. played it perfectly. There was there, there was no, like, lost step. They were just all of a sudden, they were there. Everything made sense, and and they were perfect. And Fred Willard, obviously, I mean, you know, <laughs> he's been a hero of mine, like like a lot of actors, uh, since Fernwood Tonight. And I used to watch that and repeat um, with, with Martin Mole. And, and then when he started doing the Christmas movies, you know, he's just been someone that you can't take your eyes off. I can't quit laughing at. Um, Kyle, let me ask you. Uh, we're we're kind of coming close to the uh, the planned time. Do you have any time to run over? Or do you need to go sure. in like three? Yeah, because uh, no. there's there's some quite okay, great. Because there's some questions coming in from the web chat, and I, I'd like to be able to give out the phone number again. And you just tell me when when you've got to go. Okay. You just just give me like a heads up, like one more question or something. Um, uh, uh, Conscious Choices in the web chat asked, and I, I think I know the answer to this, uh, but w- the show was based on a British show called Worst Week of My Life. That came first, obviously. That inspired right. this show. Is, 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 do, do the similarities kind of start and end at it being inspired by that show, or does it follow that show? Uh, well, I mean, you know, Jimmy Mulville created the British show. Jimmy Mulville helped create, I believe, um, Whose Line Is It Anyway, and a few other ones in a great show that I can't remember the name of about a family with young kids um, that's being tried to be Americanized right now. Really funny guy, and you know I think he helped sort of guide it to, to, to Matt Tarsus, um, who created the American version, and Matt, Matt pretty much took over from there. Um, you know, what? how much Jimmy checks in, I'm not quite sure. I just know that he's an incredibly funny, talented guy. Um, and I think they, I, I, I think Matt and the writers have, have been kind of freely uh, inspired by some of the episodes in the British version uh, when it, whenever it kind of made sense to be and obviously have have written and, and we've done whole episodes and scenes that have nothing to do with it. So um, I think probably the basic four characters. Now, I didn't watch the British version um, mm-hmm. when, I, when I got the part. I just decided not to. I would probably watch it now and I'd like to because, you know, so many of those those British uh, shows in the last few years have been so great, and um, I just haven't gotten around to it. I, I feel kind of bad, but I, I know when I got the part, I just didn't, I just, I just didn't want to sort of to watch it for whatever reason. But I've, oh, sure. I've heard it's great, and and um, and I wouldn't at all be, you know, intimidated or influenced by it now if I watched it. Um, and I'm sure it's quite good if if I know Jimmy Mulville. So. Uh, but I'm not quite sure, you know, percentage-wise, what how much of the material is taken from those episodes. That episode, the, the, the show didn't run for that many episodes either, the first one. Mm. So, and none of the British shows seem to. I mean, The Office, I think, ran for well, ten or thirteen episodes, and of course, it's yeah. been on for five seasons, four or five seasons now. And you, we forget. I mean, shows like All in the Family, and mm-hmm. uh, and yeah. shows like uh, and, and The Office, all inspired by British shows. Yeah. So you know, you know, the, the pedigree can be, either be extraordinary like that. Or like the NBC show Coupling, which died after. I actually kind of enjoyed it, but it died after you know maybe a half a dozen episodes. Right. Um, got another question for you from the web chat. Uh, Media Woman wants to know how they pulled off the swinging chandelier, uh, <laughs> and I want to set that up a little bit because <laughs> it's going to take a second. But uh, you, uh, Sam, had put um, all of the wedding uh, champagne flutes into the dishwasher, not knowing you don't, which I, I had to learn that the hard way myself, but um, <laughs> yeah, I had no idea. You don't either. put those in. Yeah. And so uh, they all broke and you pick them all up and you put them in garbage bags, which again, you know, glass and garbage bags, carrying them through the house, <laughs> through the, 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 the hallway, the foyer, and you turn and there's a tear in one bag. Pretty soon there is shards and, and glass <laughs> dust everywhere okay. on this highly highly polished floor and you're trapped in the middle and eventually you uh there's someone at the door you jump up and grab the chandelier how did how did how was that uh, executed well that that one was uh, that was one of those bits that i read in the script and i get really excited i can't wait to start working on it and the, the that's a, also a perfect example of us sort of building on something in the moment uh Originally, it was written that he gets stuck in the middle of all this glass, and he finds one spot kind of near the door that he can jump to. And it's written that he jumps to it, and the door opens at that same time, and he kind of jumps right into the family that's arriving at the door. And as we kind of got in there, um, 
and we're just sort of because I'll kind of meet with the directors and the writers kind of beforehand, like kind of look at the space and works. You know, we kind of we decided maybe he would jump up at some point and kind of try to swing somewhere with a chandelier. And then we would say, well, why don't he just accidentally swing into the family from the chandelier? And <laughs> and then when we shot it, we had him, you know, I mean, this is the thing, you get 21 minutes on the, on the episodes, and I'm often just frustrated that we don't have more time because we inevitably some really stuff that I love gets, stuff that I really love gets edited, gets edited out. And um, we we did a whole lot of bits before I get in the chandelier of how, Sam tries to get out of this glass. You know, for many reasons, I wanted it to be funny. I wanted it to be kind of virtuosic and just on a physical comedy level, like how he might try to do it. And also story-wise, I didn't want people to think, oh, why, why wouldn't he just do this or that? And that inevitably, sometimes that stuff gets cut. And the chandelier stuff, we had me swinging because we rigged it so that I could swing throughout that whole foyer. Uh, <laughs> there, was, there were two prop guys and stunt guys up kind of guiding it, and they rigged it really, you know, safely. And, and it was going all the way up to the rafters and, and so we, we rigged it so that it had a little more movement so that if I wanted to, you know, so I, I, I like latched my legs onto, onto the wall and onto the grandfather clock and onto the plant trying to kind of, you know, and then I would get stuck there and, and then I would sort of swing back through frame with a look on my face. And so we did a lot of swinging around and ultimately on, they didn't have time for all that and they just had me kind of swing back and forth. Maybe in the DVD they'll have um, the <laughs> outtake of that. But yeah, that was something we kind of discovered and then the stunt and special effects people rigged uh the chandelier to, to to be able to do that and and um, I did most of it. They had a stuntman do one of the jumps, but I did I did much of it as well. So and it's funny because when you, when you get to the end of that episode and you think back, it was actually foreshadowed because it, from the chandelier you the door opens and you swing into it and you knock down your parents and your and your in laws. Uh, in one fell swoop, and you did that earlier in the episode because yeah. the, these highly polished floors, you you started coming towards them, and you slip, and you slide, and you knock them down like bowling pins. It was. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 and at the end of the episode, stuff. I run into a cake. There, yeah, there was definitely a theme oh, okay, of, yeah. of, of Sam running into things uh, that episode, which was was fun. That was that was great. I, I have to point out, I, I remember what it was that my wife and I were watching. Uh, when my daughter heard us hysterical, and I will tell you, and you were in the scene, but I'm, I, I have to admit, you didn't steal that particular scene. It was in the pet store with the with the dead bird. Oh yeah, Ken Jeong. And the, Ken, yeah, he and he is talking to the parakeet, and the parakeet <laughs> is telling him what to do, and he says, "I am the master." <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, just, he is brilliant, and people know him from Knocked Up, and you know he's really making a name for himself. We just brought him back for another episode because we loved him so much, and and fans loved him it's it's uh that's been the great thing too is we you know julie ashton who cast the show now and amy uh a brit nanya koloff who cast the pilot did a great job of kind of setting the tone on bringing these really great comedic um guest stars on well-known people from fred, fred willard to up-and-coming people like ken jong to um to, to lesser known people, all from kind of Groundlings and Second City and Upright Citizens Brigade, all these really great, great um, improv troops. And uh, we just had Rachel Harris on, who people know from from a lot of the Guffman movies and you know a lot of the Christopher Guest movies. And uh, we, we we're kind of becoming, I mean, I hope like this sort of uh, I don't know what you would call it, a, just a, a, a laboratory. That's not the right word, but for really great sort of. Um, comedic guest stars to come on and do their thing. And it's, again, that's another thing that makes my job easier. I can be the, the straight man and just like Ken Jeong or Rachel Harris or Fred Willard go to work. And all I have to do is sort of react and not laugh, well, which I always laugh and ruin takes. But um, <laughs> well, it makes my job Olympia easier. Dukakis. And Olivia Dukakis. And, and uh, you know, we have three or four more episodes coming up, and we're, you know, we're looking at some more interesting things like that. And, uh, yeah. Now, I have to ask you uh, – uh, my wife follows the trades very much uh, and has been waiting to see about a full season pickup for you guys. She, the last thing she read was that you were picked up for three more episodes. Are you hearing anything? Can we stop sweating this? Uh, you well, know, there, we, you know there... we got three more, so that'll take us, you know, deep into January, and then, the, you know, um, you know, we'll we'll have new episodes through December and through January, and we have a we have a repeat of the pilot coming up, which is kind of cool because. Anyone that didn't see the pilot, the first episode, can see it this coming week, and then we then we start on a bunch of new episodes um, through December and January, 
and that'll take us to 16 or 17 this year. And, you know, our numbers are growing. You know, we had, um, we've grown the last three weeks. We had more people last night than, than we ever had. We, we, we're still the number one new comedy. We're one of the top comedies in general. And, um, so, you know, I know the network has always loved the show. We have a lot of goodwill, um, from the, the people that make those decisions. Um, and the numbers are growing. So hopefully all that will add up to even more episodes this season being ordered and um ideally uh for all of us uh, you know a, a season next year and second season it, it's become such a great night uh opening with big bang theory and i had uh bill prady the uh, co-creator and producer of that show on at the end of last season after they got their pickup for the second season and oh, cool. we talked about it so i mean it's such a great night you start with big bang theory and then it's uh how i met your mother and uh, two and a half men, and then your show worst week. I, you know, I it, it'd be like breaking up the you know the twenty seven Yankees as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's a great like two hour. Use that. All right, please, <laughs> please, because uh, you know, listen, I'm letting now we don't let her stay up at nine thirty ten o'clock to watch the show live. Also, there's occasionally a moment we need to fast forward through. Right, yeah, yeah. But uh, you know, I mean, it's just it's it's such a funny show. Um, you're, um, I, w- I wanted to ask you how your life has changed since you've been on a weekly show and a regular show, but at the same time, I know and you, you made mention of it earlier, twice, twice I think, because we heard crying, uh, mm-hmm. you, you're not only married, but you have a baby, I think that was born maybe August, September? Yeah, yeah, the day we started uh, production, actually. How, <laughs> wow. Yeah. How, uh, how are you juggling all this? I mean, uh, it, it's hard to become a dad. Just in, in the, the you know the run of the day kind of thing, but you know when you you just become the star of a new show and how do you manage all that? You know I think I was so thrilled by everything that I just sort of decided not to not to be anxious about it, just to be happy. I mean, and the two wonderful things, and and uh, I think we waste too much time in life, uh, you know, worrying about when nothing's happening in our life, and then when something does happen, worrying that we're going to screw it up, and that we you know. So I just felt like. You know, I mean, you've had kids. You know, it's the most wonderful mm-hmm. thing in the world. That was that was easy to be thrilled by, and um, and then the show was, um, we we were so as a crew and, and the writers and directors and the actors. I mean, we we're so excited and enthusiastic to make it good that I would go to work and just sort of we would be in this creative bubble of you know working on this this these scenes and trying to make them excellent that. I really didn't have time to like pop my head up and kind of look at the big picture or be freaked out. I just wanted to make everything really good. And so it's almost like locking yourself in your study or your den, like, you know, writing or drawing or working on a letter to an old friend or whatever. You just sort of get into it and you, you don't really notice how long you've spent there. And, and, uh, and, um, so, you know, just now, now I'm kind of being able to stick my head out and say, oh, well, what an amazing year, which is nice. And you try to, you try to savor it all and, and balance it all and, I, you know, I haven't, I can't say I've been too, I got, I got two things, I got baby and show, so that, that's that been easy, <laughs> you know, I've had an excuse to not not have to check in on, on certain things the last few months, now I'm going to have to check in and pay bills and call some people I've neglected to call for a while. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, because you went into this marriage on the show uh, with a pregnant fiance, there's obviously a baby in the works. Now, mm-hmm. being TV, I, I'm guessing that can be postponed an awful long time. Yeah, yeah, it's a movie, you know, TV magic, though. We can make that pregnancy last. Uh, so, you know, and then there's, you know, we have now with three more episodes, and, and as the numbers are growing, a possibility of more. I mean, ideally, and I, I think it will be, you know, we, we can, we have lots of places we can go. Um, in terms of the plot line, you know, before and, mm-hmm. and then obviously after and then during the baby's birth. That seems like a great either a cliffhanger at the end of the season to mm-hmm. push the effort to get picked up or a great way to start the next season or go to Christmas or Thanksgiving next year. No, and it's really year. exciting to know that, like, we're, that, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, our options are really, there are many options available to us. Uh, my daughter said to us last night as we watched the, uh, the new episode, well, what, what do they do now? You know, right. they're married. And, you know, the amazing – got to point this out. This is amazing. Folks, this is a show that you can watch with the sound off because it is just as funny without the audio <laughs> and because of the things that they put poor Kyle through. But um, the wedding itself, 
There's been this whole buildup. Every episode has been building up from the beginning of the season to last night. The marriage, the wedding itself, the wedding itself was just a very simple, very elegant, nothing went wrong. It was so, so much the antithesis of everything else. It was a beautiful moment. Yeah, I, I really like, like that too. And I hadn't, I, you know, I, I had just seen it yesterday, the way they, uh, they put it together. I agree. It was, it was so sweet. And that's just great uh, creative instincts from the writers to the, to the directors to the, you know, that's just, that's just knowing how to put something together, when to, when to pull back on one element and push another element. Um, we just saw him set the pool on fire and, you know, get caught uh, doing something unseemly to himself uh, by the pastor. The, 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 you know, and, the, you know, there was a great instinct show. The, the next thing should be just an incredibly sweet moment. And not too sweet, not like syrupy sweet. And, and no, not at all. Lowest, it was just very truthful. It was like that's how a wedding happens. They, people smile and cry, and and no matter what's happening, um, everyone's in a good mood. So and that was just that was just great taste shown by um, you know, everyone that put that together. I, I love how Mel says to uh, Sam uh, last night, um, how do you even set a pool on fire? <laughs> yeah. I'm looking at it, and I'm thinking, the, I saw it happen, and it made perfect sense, but I'm thinking, yeah, yeah. yeah. How yeah. do you do that? Who thinks of that? <laughs> yeah, Sam, but, Sam manages to find a way. <laughs> Sam manages to set, I should point this out too, Sam manages to set a number of things on fire. Uh, I think the... Uh, uh, and going back through clips uh, this afternoon, uh, one of the things he set on fire was a, uh, a hand-painted portrait of his new father-in-law. Yes, and a truck is in his uh, Dick's, Dick's prize truck. He he set on. Oh, how did I truck. forget that? Yeah. 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 So, yeah he's, he's, while you're taking a family maniac. picture. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's actually a cautionary um, tale about. Yeah. Is is there anything you can tell us about upcoming stories? A little tease of maybe some things that are coming in, in the in the. Yeah, I mean we movies? have. Um, you know, you know, the holidays are coming up, so we have a, we have a couple of fun holiday uh, episodes, and then uh, I mean, to your 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 daughter's question, I mean, you know, where do they go from here? Now we're married, and now we have a baby on the way, so we've we've been working on episodes that that address um, you know new married couple and where they live and the baby that's on the way, and then and like I said, the holiday stuff. So that's what's that's what's in the works, and uh, and we'll be spending more time at you know seeing Sam kind of mess up and fix things uh and mess up again at work and and we'll see Mel's place of work and and uh we'll, we'll see some old characters that um, people liked from the first few episodes coming back and yeah. Oh, there's still a lot of tension between uh Sam's uh, buddy whose name escapes me and uh Chloe. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah he's played by Nick Kroll as Adam. Yeah. Nick Kroll's a great stand-up and improv guy and actor and um we were all really happy to get. He was like on everybody's list to have play that part and we're really happy that he did he was funny last night he improvises a lot he a lot of that great improv last night when he's kind of flirting with the bartender before before i messed <laughs> everything up at the pool he you know he's another one that's really fun to work with i i want to uh, encourage people if you have not seen the show you can catch uh episodes on cbs.com go to where it says shows and at what worst week but I, as i'm saying that i also want to zing cbs a little bit because the Worst Week site, I don't know about the rest of the CBS site, but the, the site that they have set up for your show is really crappy. I will, the, I will, uh, okay. The, <laughs> well, I've got to tell this is me, not you saying this, but the clips that they say, you know, see like a clip of the show and they highlight things, none of them work. They've all okay. expired. They will not play. Also, on the cast page, there's the four principals, but none of the other actors. So, uh, yeah, noted. you know, if they, noted. They, need to, they need to show more support for the show so people can get the hang of it. So here's what you can do, folks. Go to YouTube. CBS also puts its clips on YouTube. So go to YouTube, enter in quotes, worst week. You'll get an incredible array of worst week clips. I encourage you to do it if you haven't seen the show. And even if you've seen the show, go back and watch these clips again. Um, I've got one last question for you. We'll let you go. And you're very generous with your time, especially being a new dad. I, I can imagine you'd much rather be there playing with the baby than um, doing this. But we appreciate it. Uh, when we started talking, you mentioned commercials you had been in. I cannot let that slide. Uh, IMDb does not list commercials. So tell us, Kyle Bornheimer, what commercials have you been in over the years so we can keep an eye out when, when they start showing up places? Um, uh, I was in a Geico commercial um a few years back that, that played quite a bit. I was in a, um, I was kind of making fun of my boss and he catches me and fires me. 
um, I was in a, um, a Stanley Power Tools commercial where I have a sort of jousting match on a on a construction site um, with using a um, a tape measure as a sword. Um, I was in a, a T-Mobile commercial where I'm leaving a message for a, a date that I had, and I keep I keep flubbing flubbing the message and having to hang up and leave another message. I keep saying embarrassing things to this this woman that I went on a date with. Um, and uh, what else? Is in a Coors commercial where I'm out like fishing with buddies and um i was in a nissan truck commercial where i i get attacked by like a squirrel and all my friends are laughing at me um yeah i mean i've, I've, I've done quite a few uh, the course commercial is that like you're sitting on the dock with someone and I can't. I mean, I'm gonna get like, what was the concept? It was like wide mouth cans was the, what they were selling, and and I we're like it was like me and some buddies, and we're that one didn't play very long. We were like like looking at like a stream, and uh, it was a weird. We're like looking at a stream, oh. and I'm yelling like, look at the like how beautiful that is, and they think I'm talking about the river, but I'm talking about this new Coors Light can. <laughs> Got it. Um, it was one of those. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well. Um, Listen, uh, folks, check out Kyle Bornheimer, star of the Fall Down Funny. Mr. Media guarantees you will be hysterical. Sitcom. Worst week. It's on Monday night, uh, 9.30 p.m. I may have said 10 p.m. earlier. 9.30 p.m. after Two and a Half Men on CBS. You can catch the episodes you've missed for free at CBS.com or go see clips on YouTube.com by entering Worst Week. Also, I don't want to forget, you've got... uh, a movie coming out next year. Uh, you mentioned it earlier. She's out of my league. Uh, do you know when that? Do you know when that will uh, come out? They're looking at the. They're looking at spring. It's a great. Uh, they've just. They've tested it. It's been testing, I guess, through the roof. So we're really excited. I hope they start marketing soon because I want people to know about it, and uh, they're really excited about it. Um, and I play a much different character, which is fun. Uh, Jay Baruchel is in it, who people know from Tropic Thunder, and and uh, knocked up in a lot of the Apatow movies. And, and he plays a guy that kind of starts dating a really hot girl who everyone thinks is out of his league, and and, um, and uh, we all kind of give him a hard time. And it's really funny, and, and I'm very excited about it. DreamWorks, and it comes out probably in the spring. Excellent. Well, good luck with that. And uh, listen, I, I will be, we'll be anxiously waiting for CBS to give you guys the full season pickup. And uh, many more seasons after that. Uh, I, I, again, we love the show on our house. You know, there's only so many sitcoms that we can all watch together, and even right. though this one's a little risque, it, <laughs> you know, it, it it meets the test for our house. Um, congratulations on the baby, and I hope we can get you come back again, uh, maybe later in the season, beginning of next season, to, to catch up on what's going on with the show. Oh, definitely. Um, I think it uh, is really great time, and, and I appreciate um, I appreciate doing it. Right. Thanks so much, and uh, good luck. Happy uh, right. Happy holidays. Yeah, you too. Have a great uh, Thanksgiving. All right, Kyle. Take care, and thanks for calling. Thank you. Bye bye. All right. Bye bye. Folks, for uh, dozens more celebrity and media newsmaker interviews, uh, surf over to our main website, www.mrmedia.com. That's where you can listen to my earlier conversations with Cheryl Hines and Jeff Garland of Curb Your Enthusiasm, uh, Ethan Supley of My Name Is Earl, or the Big Bang Theory co-creator and executive producer, Bill Prady, among many, many others. Please think about writing an online review of Mr. Media, uh, casting a vote for Mr. Media, or marking Mr. Media as one of your favorites, whether you listen to us on Blog Talk Radio, uh, digitaljournal.com, Podcast Pickle, Vox, Folio, Mediafly, Podfeed.net, Blueberry, Zencast, Odeo, Kindle Reader, or iTunes. And if you've got an idea for a guest, email me directly at bob at andelman.com. Dot com. It's Andelman, A-N-D-E-L-M-A-N. Thanks so much for joining us today. I always appreciate when you give up a little bit of your dune. Lots more great shows to come. Bye, everybody.